Romans chapter 9, the Apostle Paul quotes a, a prophet Isaiah, ending chapter 9 of Romans, he, verse 33, as it is written, he's talking about what Isaiah wrote, chapter 20, 28, he said, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, that whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, this rock, of course, is Christ. The one who is speaking is God. The Father laid the Son as in, in, the, in the eternal purpose of God. He placed the, the Son as the, the, the rock, or the Peter referencing this text said the, the cornerstone. Now, in the text in Isaiah actually says, instead of shall not be ashamed, he says, shall not make haste. And Paul says, shall not be ashamed. And I I take that as a, an, an expounding what Isaiah said. He shall not make haste. And in, in looking over some of the other versions of Scripture, of the, of the text, uh, some versions actually say, of the Isaiah text, uh, say, shall not haste away. And I thought that was good. I thought, that, that, gives, me, that gives me the idea, shall not make haste, is that he who believes on, on the sun, on this rock, He's at home. He's comfortable in the presence of God. Yeah. He will not make haste. In other words, he's welcome. He's a, he, he fits in, into the throne room. He, he yeah. fits there because he believes on this rock. But this, this word shame uh, is, is something that I want to uh, spend a little bit of time thinking about uh, here at this table. He who believes on this rock shall not be ashamed. Now, shame was introduced to the human race when sin was committed. This is not something that God gave, God imposed on the race. Sin imposed it yeah. onto the race. And sin, shame is only removed where sin is removed. Amen. Now, Jesus told, uh, gave an example of a man at a wedding feast who took a, took a higher seat than he should have, and so he was asked to move down, and he moved with shame. And David, many times, prayed against those who, who sought after his life that they would be put to shame. So you get the idea that wrongdoers are shame owners, and rightfully so. Shame is a residue of sin, like sweat is a residue of work. It is the unique and exclusive work of Jesus, this rock, to free a sinner from his shame. So saying he shall not be ashamed is saying he shall be forgiven. It's another way of saying he'll be saved. He won't be ashamed. Free indeed from guilt is the one whom Jesus forgives. Free indeed from the wages of sin. Free indeed from the servitude of sin. Free indeed from shame is the one whom Jesus, who believes in Jesus. Shame is a companion of guilt and a friend of iniquity. Shame is actually a testimony of the conscience. Shame is the conscience accusing you and discomforting the offender. Jesus pointed out a man that was praying that wouldn't lift up his head, and he smote his breast, and he asked for mercy. It was because he was, he was, he was sensitive to, that, to the testimony of his conscience, and he was, he was ashamed of himself before God. The anxious stoners of the adulterous woman dropped their stones and left one by one because they were ashamed. They realized they weren't really any different than her. Peter wept bitterly in shame when Jesus looked, and the prodigal son came home and confessed to his father in shame. And ultimately, some men will call for the rocks and the mountains to hide on them, to hide them because of their, of their shame. He that believes on Jesus will not be ashamed. Amen. Amen. Shame is a soul burden, or it is a soul illness. If born ultimately to death, this shame will sear the conscience and make men unable to, uh, to respond to God. Shame is, in some sense, a warning, a trumpet sound in the soul that an enemy is, has entered. Shame is like the, the cry of, of the watchman on the tower. The best work that shame has ever done is drive a sinner to the Savior. Yeah. Yeah. 
the prophet Daniel has said, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and ever everlasting contempt. So shame is another word for saying for condemned or lost or judged of God. He that believes on Jesus shall not be ashamed. No shame will be seen or experienced in the presence of God. Shame and glory cannot dwell together. There will be nothing in heaven or in you that could possibly cause shame because you believe on Jesus. Shame will pass away in that world with all other former things that will pass away, not to be remembered. In the prophet Hosea, the Lord said as a curse, I will change their glory into shame. And those that's going to happen to all those who don't believe on that last day. Their, their glory will be turned into shame. Now, shame is not to be thought of as just embarrassment. If shame was a one-gallon word, then embarrassment is a teaspoon. So shame ultimately is ruin. Shame is what men have left when they lose everything. A nation that is wasted by its enemies is left with shame. Sin brings men to ruin, leaving nothing but shame. Jesus turns or changes shame into glory. He that believes on him shall not be put to shame. Isaiah 45, 17 says, Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Amen. This is the work of Jesus, to take away shame. Forgiveness is the only escape from shame. Jesus is the only means of forgiveness. That's why Jesus, the promise God gave is of Jesus. He who believes on him shall not be ashamed. That he's not, he's not going to be ruined. He's not going to come to waste. He will not be ashamed. When sin is washed away, so shame also must go. When the virus is killed, so goes the symptoms. Shame is like a, is, see, is a residue of sin. When Jesus delivers from sin, he delivers from shame. Mm -hmm. That man, that any man can come into the presence of God with joy and with boldness proves that forgiveness is effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. 1 John 2.28 he says, Now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. As we eat the, at this table, remember that they ate, the, they ate the Passover in haste, ready to leave the country. So they ate with everything you know, ga gathered up. It wasn't like just a time to relax and eat. They were, they were eating, ready, ready to leave the country. We are eating at this table ready to leave this world. We're thinking about his appearing as we eat. We do not remember Jesus like people, like men remember an historical figure. We are remembering him, longing to see him. See, it's a different kind of, different kind of remembrance. We're not, it's not just a uh, remorse remembrance. We're re remembering in anticipation of, of seeing him. We're waiting for him to appear. We are remembering in hope our remembrance at this table reaches back and it reaches forward back to what he has finished forward to his appearing is it we we do show the lord's death till he come at this table and shame will have nothing in you that believe on him will find no hold shame finds no place to rest her foot in those who are resting in jesus Amen. In you that believe. So I bid you at this table to, to believe on this rock that God has set as a cornerstone. I bid you to believe in him because he is the vine. On him because he is the root. On him because he is the shepherd, the savior, the redeemer, the high priest, and the king of kings and lord of lords. Believe on him and you will not be ashamed. Amen. It is those who believe on him that he will on that day present to his father, and that presentation will be without shame Amen. before him. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this table.
We thank you for giving it uh, to us to remember Jesus, and we ask that you would give us uh, strength uh, to uh, have uh, mastery over our minds, our, our thoughts at this table, uh, to remember Jesus, to, to put out distractions and, and any, any hindering thoughts. Uh, we thank you for the, uh, what this table means to uh, by giving us the bread uh, as a, it, the, that it is his body and this, this cup, that it is his, the New Testament in his blood. We pray, Lord, that this remembrance will be strengthening, nourishing, and that it will, um, it will help us to wait for him to appear. In Jesus' name, amen.